Hello, and welcome to First Chapter Friday. This week, I'll be reading from The Running Dream by Wendelin Van Drannen. The Running Dream follows the story of Jessica, who her entire life, she's been a runner. She has always been very active in her track team, and she has, like, major running dreams. Like, these are her major life aspirations, is to be the, the best runner possible. Um... And on the way home from a track meet, which she did really well, there was an accident. And one of her legs is amputated below the knee. So in her mind, her life is over. Just running to find who she is. And now she can't do that. And it's rough. And then as the story progresses, she realizes that maybe she could possibly run again, even though it may be hard. And so it goes through her journey. It's a very inspiring story, and I just think it's wonderful. And I hope you do too. Here we go. Part one, finish line, chapter one. My life is over. Behind the morphine dreams is the nightmare of reality, a reality I can't face. I cry myself back to sleep, wishing, pleading, praying that I'll wake up from this. But the same nightmare always awaits me. Shh, my mother whispers. It'll be okay. But her eyes are swollen and red, and I know she doesn't believe what she's saying. My father, now that's a different story. He doesn't even try to lie to me. What's the use? He knows what this means. My hopes, my dreams, my life, it's over. The only one who seems unfazed is Dr. Wells. Hello there, Jessica, he says. I don't know if it's the day or night, the second day or the first. How are you feeling? I just stare at him. What am I supposed to say? Fine. He inspects my chart. So let's have a look, shall we? He pulls the covers off my lap, and I find myself face to face with the truth. My right leg has no foot, no ankle, no shin. It's just my thigh, my knee, and a stump wrapped in a mountain of gauze. My eyes flood with tears as Dr. Wells removes the bandages and inspects his handiwork. I turn away, only to see my mother fighting back tears of her own. It'll be okay, she tells me, holding tight to my hand. We'll get through this. Dr. Wells is maddening, madding, madding, maddening, sorry, I can't say that word today. Cheerful. This looks excellent, Jessica. Nice vascular flow, good color. You're already healing beautifully. I glance at the monstrosity below my knee. It's red and bulging at the end. Fat staples run around my stump like a big ugly zipper, and the skin is stained dirty yellow. How's the pain, he asks. Are you managing okay? I wipe away my tears and nod, because the pain in my leg is nothing compared to the one in my heart. None of their meds will make that one go away. He goes on cheerfully. I'll order a shrinker sock to control the swelling. Your residual limb will be very tender for a while, and applying the shrinker sock may be uncomfortable at first, but it's important to get you into one. Reducing the swelling and shaping your limb is the first step in your rehabilitation. A nurse appears to rebandage me as he makes notes in my chart and says, A prosthesist, prosthetist, We'll be in later today to apply it. Tears continue to run down my face. I don't seem to have the strength to hold them back. Dr. Wells softens. The surgery went beautifully, Jessica. He says this like he's trying to soothe away reality. And considering everything, you're actually very lucky. You're alive and you still have your knee, which makes a huge difference in your future mobility. BK amputees have it much easier than AK amputees. BK? AK? My mom asks. I'm sorry, he says, turning to my mother. Below knee, above knee. In the world of prosthetic legs, it's a critical difference. He prepares to leave. There will obviously be an adjustment period, but Jessica is young and fit, and I have full confidence that she will return to a completely normal life. My mother nods, but she seems dazed like she's wishing my father was here to help her absorb what's being said. 
Dr. Wells flashes a final smile at me. Focus on the positive, Jessica. We'll have you up and walking again in short order. This from the man who sawed off my leg. He whooshes from the room, leaving a dark, heavy cloud of the unspoken behind. My mother smiles and coos reassuringly, but she knows what I'm thinking. What does it matter? I'll never run again. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and read the second chapter because it's short and I think it kind of gives good perspective to everything. Chapter two. I am a runner. That's what I do. It's who I am. Running is all I know or want or care about. It was a race around the soccer field in third grade that swept me into a real love of running. Breathing the sweet smell of spring grass, sailing over dots of blooming clover, beating all the boys. After that, I couldn't stop. I ran everywhere, raced everyone, loved the wind across my cheeks, through my hair. Running aired out my soul. It made me feel alive. And now, I'm stuck in this bed, knowing I'll never run again. So that is the beginning of the running dream. Uh, it's sad at times, and then it gets hopeful. So I hope you will read this. Everyone I know who's read it has loved it. So talk to your librarian, your school librarian, your public librarian, or you can always get it on Amazon. And I hope you read today.